My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Today's special guest is a, a newer real estate entrepreneur who has cut his, sta- his teeth in real estate investing by doing house hacking. He's also a private money lend- lender for some other real estate investors who are doing a d- few different flips and things like that. So please help me welcome Mr. Theo Kim. Zooming in from beautiful Florida. How are you doing today, Theo? Good. How are you, David? I am fantastic. Welcome to the show. So tell us a little bit about what sparked your interest in real estate investing in the first place. Uh, you know, it's like it's like most people, they're just tired of their like uh their nine to five jobs. So like I was working at the theme parks here in Florida and I was just like really burnt out. Working at the, like, that sounds like a fun job, man. I guess it's not as fun yeah. as it sounds. <laughs> well, no, just it, out of curiosity, what were you doing? It, it's definitely fun. Um, so, like, as for right now, I do, uh, I'm a mechanic over at Universal. So, uh, yeah. work on the rides and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I was working, uh, like at Disney and, you know, I did a bunch of different stuff. So, um, like operations and stuff like that. But it's, it's a lot of fun but it also gets you like really burnt out quickly. So I would imagine I, I could imagine. Yeah. All right. So you're starting to get burnt out at the job. And then what was it that sparked about real estate? Did you hear something, read something, meet somebody? How did you figure it out? Yeah. Uh, I was talking to some coworkers and there's a couple of them that were into finance. And so um, I started reading like rich dad, poor dad. And that kind of like just, made a mental mind change for me. I started mm-hmm. going to real estate. Yep. I started going to real estate seminars and stuff like that. Just learning about everything finance. Um, I was always interested in it. Like I took economics in college and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but like it, nothing was applicable until. Yeah. It's, it's, until it's all got... kind of theoretical, right? It's yeah out there for mm-hmm. companies and corporations and countries and things like that. But, how it yeah. applies to us as individuals is different. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you, you got the spark, you started studying and then what led you to take action and, and what was like, walk me through that deal. Um, I guess the first thing was uh, I started getting a job as a mechanic. And so I started making a lot more money than I was before. And so I told my wife, Hey, instead of, having uh spending inflation let's just save more money so we actually moved from a one bedroom apartment and move into an rv wow and from there we're able to save that, that's a more very money. understanding wife my friend <laughs> i tell you what <laughs> she was big into tiny homes so i'm like hey an rv is basically a tiny home and we love camping and stuff like that so it worked <laughs> hey, out babe i got you a tiny home on wheels <laughs> yeah oh, nice so, okay well, no no she's she's pretty great <laughs> that's awesome we're, we're both simple people and so uh we saved up a lot of money uh covid hit right around that time it was in 2019 ish yeah and uh we took that money and we actually i actually invested in the stock market during that crash and uh it recovered rather quickly and so um with that money it it, it, it provided a huge return and uh, I was able to spend it on our first house, um, which I was focused on um, renting out the rooms. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and then we decided to move in one of the rooms. So that was my first property. Very, very interesting. All right. So how long did you guys live in the RV for? Uh, about two years. Wow. Okay. And how much were you able to send save up over that time frame? Was it both of you working and saving up at the same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Smart. And then I'm impressed that you didn't get that stock market bug and keep trying to replicate what you did in the stock market with that, that yeah. profit that you made. What, what gave you the discipline to decide to get out of that and get into real estate? Um, I've always been slightly in the stock market. 
and I still like I still keep my finger on it but like um I knew that it was like a black swan event where it's like a once in a lifetime deal with COVID yeah so I knew that wasn't gonna happen every day so that's mainly why okay all right well hey hats off to you my friend because a lot of people they they make a big win like that it's kind of like gambling yeah you did a lot smarter than, than gamblers do but it's a little bit like that you you get you get hooked it's it, it could be mm -hmm. very easy to get hooked so i'm impressed that you were disciplined enough to understand that that was more of a one-off thing and it wasn't easily replicatable and and take that money and and purchase a property all right so what tell describe that house that you guys bought uh, it, it, like how much was it how much did you put down for down payment how many rooms just kind of walk me through the big picture of, of the deal if you don't mind theo yeah uh, our intention was always to get a um an investment property but uh this one is a room rental so like it has five bedrooms and uh it was uh, $286,000 mm -hmm. and then we bought it conventionally. Um, we put, uh, I believe back then it was 10% down. Okay. So um, yeah. Um, Good. And I hope we were able to get it when interest rates were still pretty low. Yeah. 2.9%. Uh, oh yeah. That's sweet. Uh, yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> and hopefully that got locked in for a while. Okay. So yeah. was, was it a single family house home originally or, or had it already yeah. been getting rented out by the room? No, it was a single family uh, home. Okay. And so did you guys bought it and then did you move in right away or did you rent out rooms and stay in the RV for a while or how did that work? Uh, we stayed in the RV for a little bit and then we decided it was cheaper to um, actually move in ourselves. We just, the, the RV was kind of, since it was a cheap RV, it was kind of falling apart a little bit, so... <laughs> I remember years ago spending a couple of months in an RV kind of touring around uh, mm -hmm. when I was moving somewhere and it was an old crappy thing. And my God, it seemed good. It seemed like a really good idea, but there's nothing cheap about an old crappy RV <laughs> <That's> <Yeah. laughs> between gas and repairs and breakdowns. It's, it could be a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So you, so, so how many of the rooms had you rented out to other people before you moved in? Uh, I kind of forget, but it was somewhere around like two or three, but we basically, we filled it up pretty quickly. Yeah. So I'm very curious, Theo, it's you and your wife. You're in one of the rooms. I'm assuming you don't yeah. have kids yet. No. Okay. That, thank God. So you're, yeah. you're the two of you in one of the rooms and you've got four tenants in the other four rooms. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been doing that for a couple of years now? Uh, it's been about three years now. That was oh, in late. It was, yeah, that was in 2020. So, so I'm just remembering back to my roommate days, my friend. And, uh, there were always a few challenges that came up and I just had one roommate for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys manage it with four <laughs> strangers living in your house? Uh, I kind of built like a process and a system and then we kind of learn over, over time. Um, we uh we do like a background check we do um we do like a little interview in the beginning so i always i always tend to pick um people who are like kind of introverted like myself which i'm really introverted so like if i see that they have like a kind of a calm demeanor uh, i kind of judge them based off of that and then um and then it's been working out. Like all of my roommates are really, really great. They just keep nice. to themselves. I I make it clear with them that you know it's a it's a workers person's house. So like we're just super tired of working each day. We come home to just recover. I like playing video games, uh, watching TV, and that sort of thing. And then we just go out and work again. So um, so you're everyone, one of the people that are doing the same thing, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is there any commonality besides being introverted amongst your, your tenants? Are they mostly male or is it mixed male and female? Professions? Uh, it's mixed. Yeah. Uh, over here, we tend to get, um, we tend to get people who are like from the, the theme parks. Um, they don't, 
they don't really make too much to like actually get like a one bedroom apartment. So the value that I'm kind of providing is uh, I get um, a room in a house. So you have a house experience and then um, you're able to pay, you know, half of what you would in a one bedroom. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's huge, huge savings for them yeah. really is a win-win. How do you coordinate things with bathrooms and kitchens and cleanup? Uh, we have a house cleaner uh, who comes uh, twice a month. Okay. So that helps a little bit. Um, and then uh, we kind of divvy up, label everything. Like we have a lot of cabinets. So each cabinet, we kind of mark it for each person. Um, and yeah. Um, one fridge, two fridges. How many fridges you got? Uh, just one fridge. It's a decent sized fridge, but it's just one. Yeah. Uh, now, do most, most of the people them. there or do most of the people there cook for themselves or kind of order in or eat out or doesn't sound yeah, like a, a lot of us happen. no not too much i think just one person will cook once in a while and then that's it most of us use the microwave so <laughs> <laughs> okay. that simplifies things a lot how many yeah. bathrooms have you got uh four bathrooms oh lots then okay yeah that's good so each person has a private bathroom except for two of the rooms and they give them a little bit of a break on the on the rent because they don't have their own bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So if you don't mind sharing, what's the what's the average that you're charging? Well, what are you charging for a room with an ensuite versus a mm. room that doesn't have its own bathroom? So yeah, the the highest one is one the master bedroom. Uh it's really, really big and nice. That's like a giant walk in closet, um, a whole bathtub and shower room and all that stuff so it's like living in an apartment almost by yourself um and that one we charge roughly around like 950 mm -hmm. and then and um, that's not the one you and your wife are staying in no <laughs> oh good discipline you guys that's amazing yeah yeah um and then uh and then the one that has a shared bathroom is around like 750 um it used to be uh six six fifty back in the day in 2019 but kind of raised it a little bit <clears throat> yeah cool so theo what what it sounds like this property is probably cash flowing pretty nicely for you uh yeah is, and what are you doing with your profit so your wife's working you're working you're making decent money you're generating cash flow from house hacking your home uh, you've set things up very, very smart that way. So what's what's next? I understand you're doing a, a little bit of private lending. Yeah. What other real estate plans do you do and do you plan and do you have? Uh, my goal initially was to scale up what we had. So I was going to get this and like purchase a new property every year. Um, yeah. But with the rates and prices going like crazy high, um, it didn't really like make sense too much. So what I did was um, this year and last year, I was kind of committed to uh, really networking hard. So I started going to the Bigger Pockets um, conference that came here. And then uh, I'm also part of uh, this group called Subject 2 or Sub 2 with Face Morby. <clears throat> so I'm part of his community as well. And then uh, so I was just networking really hard and then I found that I could fund people who are like actually working um, and funding their uh, fix and flips and new construction. So I started doing that. So uh, right now I'm funding a flip in Kentucky. Um, uh, I'm funding uh, a new construction here in Florida as well. Very cool. And what are your plans for moving ahead when it comes to your own real estate portfolio? Do you want to just keep being a private money lender? Do you want to buy more properties? Do you want to get into something different? What what? what do you um, think? Uh, right now I'm looking to um, buy another uh, room rental property. So I found someone who like likes what I'm doing and they're offering to go in 50, 50. Hmm. So we're active on that one right now. I just came back from a house uh, yesterday uh, looking at one of those properties. So how many, <clears throat> and then, how many bedrooms? Uh, it has five. Nice. 
but we're looking to um put three more bedrooms because it's, it's pretty big yeah nice yeah mm -hmm. you know what this this reminds me i did an interview a while ago with another gentleman doing something kind of similar but up here in canada uh in ontario where i think the landlord tenancy rules are are pretty harsh a lot worse than than florida uh, and he was he's doing rooming uh boarding what do you call it boarding homes or rooming houses same idea mm -hmm. right but his unique twist on things was he actually invested a fair amount of money in updating the properties so I believe each room has its own ensuite. So each room has okay. its own bathroom. Each room doesn't have a, a full on kitchen, but it has its own microwave. And he installed like big screen TVs in each room as well. Kept kind of soundproofed the the walls a bit more, although he's he's looking for quiet people as well, right? But Basically, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like a self enclosed studio type suite mm. within this thing, and by doing that, let me see if I can remember this correctly. By doing that, and having it as a like a rooming house category, he wasn't under the same rules as the landlord tenancy. He was able to charge much higher than normal rent for these rooms because his whole thing was he he offered people the opportunity to rent without having to go through credit checks and this and that and the other thing mm -hmm. because of the rules and regulations if they kick up a storm or cause a trouble he can actually kick them out with one day's notice kind of thing instead of 30 days and, and all that kind of thing so are you aware mm -hmm. of, of any of the rules and regulations that might be different for you having like a a rooming situation versus a normal tenancy? Um, from what I've seen, um, it looks like it's a lot more lenient when it comes to rooms. Um, I believe, uh, I believe there's less than a two week notice. If I'm, I mean, don't quote me on this. Like I'm, I'm not a hundred percent, but, uh, last I checked, uh, it was something like that. And then so our contracts you know, obviously reflect uh, what's allowed on that. And uh, I'm not sure what the main differences are uh, for people who rent out the whole house, but I do believe there's a little bit of a, of a difference, especially if their contract is like six months to a year. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he definitely, well, I think his was like a, a weekly, a week to week type thing or something, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Very, very cool. Very interesting. So you're planning on doing more of these. If you wave yeah. the realistic magic wand, are, are you going to stick to this niche or are you going to expand into other things? What are, you, what are your thoughts, Theo? Uh, I'm probably going to... I found a lot of value in this niche and I feel like I understand it. Um, but I also want to get into new construction as well. So um, part of my funding... Um, I got to see kind of a flip side by side with a uh, new construction. And I really like how new construction, um, even though people kind of think there's like less risk or there's more risk with new construction, um, it's kind of like less drama in a way. So uh, I kind of like that. And so um, I am looking to like maybe shift towards partnering when it comes to new construction. Um, instead of just uh lending <clears throat> so nice now moving forward are you going to start raising capital for your own deals as well or are you going to stick more on to self-financing and and doing private money lending uh, a little bit of both yeah i think yeah, yeah. very very cool awesome theo yeah. well this has been a lot of fun thank you very much for sharing your experience and your insights and i love what you and your wife have done so far i i absolutely respect the level of self-discipline that you guys have the ability to delay gratification the fact that you know that that you can create more profit from renting out the master suite to somebody else versus you guys living a little bit more 
comfortable lifestyle. Um, yeah. It's very, very impressive. So my hats off to you guys. And I think, yeah, I think you're going to have great success if you stay on this path. Yeah, thank you. Now, if yeah, people want to connect with you and reach out, what should they do, Theo? Um, oh, they could, uh, like, wait, like if me. you could only pick one way for people to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, social media? Yeah, probably social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Okay, and they so, just look look for what, Theo Kim? They can look for Theodore Kim on Facebook. Uh, on Instagram, it'll be Crew Knight, C-R-U-E-K-N-I-G-H-T. Very and good. Just hit me up there. Sounds good. Well, keep up the good work. Yep, thank you. Yeah, it was right, nice everybody. talking to you. It was nice talking to you as well. All right, everybody, take care, and we'll see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit MoneyPartnerFormula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.